for the love of God, do not use the multiple pronouns at the same time. I.e., do not say, oh, they here coming over tonight. Don't do that. That's not correct. Think about it as if somebody was using she, her pronouns. You wouldn't say, oh yeah, she, her is coming over tonight. You would say, she's coming over tonight. You would only use one of those pronouns in that pronoun set. Yeah, I think the pronouns are really confusing. Yeah. Yes, I don't even know what a pronoun is. Now, I don't know about you guys, but ever since I was a young lad, I was inclined to do the opposite of what people told me I had to do. I guess you could say I always like to push the envelope a little bit. So when that lovely young lady we just heard from said, Don't do that. Well, a younger and slightly more confrontational me would have done the exact opposite of what she told me not to do. However, today, at my age, I just avoid these people at any and all costs. Anyway, welcome back. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I have a crazy clown world update for you guys today, and I'm telling you, it's a wild one. And it's Friday, the weekend's here, so we're just going to try to have some fun, have a few laughs. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> it keeps happening. Um, anyway, if you place your attention on the screen for a moment. So here, I mean, this pretty much goes without saying, but for those of you that are new here, yes, this blue-haired fella uses the ladies' restroom, and looks for dates on lesbian dating apps. Who, who the f*** do you think you are, you crazy little sh All right, so on this next one, it gets cut off at the very beginning, and it sounds like she says 50 pounds. She actually says 350 pounds. I don't know if you guys can see it right by my head there. It says, there's no way that somebody over 350 pounds can be healthy, actually. And it's just one of those TikToks where one person is talking to themselves, but they pretend that it's two people having a conversation. When in all reality, it's just this young lady trying to justify the fact that she is fairly huge. And we can thank the body positivity movement, also known as the fat acceptance movement, for this nonsense. Roll it. 50 pounds can be healthy. Actually, I know a lot of people who are over that weight who are completely healthy and their doctors say their lab work is great. Okay, but while they might be healthy now, they're going to have health problems down the line. And you could too. What? You also could have health problems down the line. You're just not aware of them yet. Okay, but like, fat people have a higher chance of getting those health problems. Actually, studies show that those health risks can be mitigated by pursuing healthy behaviors. You can't tell if a fat person is pursuing healthy behaviors or not just by looking at them. And actually, bald people have a higher chance of having cardiovascular disease than fat people do. But I don't think you're going around telling all bald people they're going to be unhealthy eventually, are you? Well, no, but, but nothing. You said that somebody over 350 pounds can never be healthy. And when I questioned you on that, you said, okay, but they could become unhealthy. And that's true of everyone. So I don't know what your point is. Hmm. You know, it's amazing. You are 100% wrong. I mean, nothing you've said has been right. Did that young lady really just say you can't tell if a fat person is pursuing healthy behaviors just by looking at them? One last point I'd like to make about what she just said. I see quite a few bald elderly people out there in the world. It's very rare that I see a morbidly obese elderly person out there in the world. Anyway, next up, ladies, you are about to get an anatomy and biology lesson from this purple-haired fella. Roll it. It never ceases to amaze me the number of cisgender women who need to be educated about the anatomy of their own body. You don't have to have a uterus to have a monthly cycle. The intestines and the muscles around the uterus also contract and cramp up in order to help the uterus shed lining because it pushes from the outside. That's how it works. The body doesn't know that there's no uterus there. All it knows is I have these hormones raging through my body. Intestines and muscles do your thing. If once a month your body is being told that your intestines should cramp up to help the non-existent uterus get rid of the internal lining in there, then it's going to cause poop problems. 
If I was a cisgender woman, I would be very embarrassed to admit that I don't know how my own body works. Because whenever you do that, you discount a bunch of other cisgender women from being women as well. What the f is this guy talking about? Now, in my opinion, that is one of the most bizarre things that we've seen since we've all been thrust into this crazy, upside-down, backwards, bizarro world, also known as clown world, is that you have these biological men who could never experience a menstrual cycle lecturing women about menstrual cycles. Anyway, real quick, guys, we don't have any sponsors for today's video. If you'd like to sponsor the next video and help support the channel, there is a PayPal link in the description box below. And I will say your full name as a sponsor of said video unless stated otherwise by you. Okay, enough. Get this off the screen, please. What the f*** is this? I told you guys at the beginning that it was going to be a wild one today. Anyway, next up, so this young lady identifies as a trans femme. And she starts us off by saying trans femme slideshows. Slideshows, I don't know what that means. Um, but I will say, I didn't add the bleeps in this one. She did it herself. So if you're wondering what she's saying, your guess is as good as mine. Roll it. Trans femme slideshows are like, I'm just a weak little puppy girl. Please pin me up against the wall with my blahage and treat me like your little... Until I can't walk while saying I'm your good girl. I'm, I mean, like, mood. I'm calling myself out too, but you can't, like, deny. You on drugs? I don't know what the hell that was about, and honestly, I don't want to know. Anyway, next up. So, this person, uh, Cass, it says Cass, she, they. So, Cass claims to have DID, which is Dissociative Identity Disorder. Now, as we've seen, it's kind of a fad here on the TikToks where people claim to have that and have all these people living in their head. Alters, they call them. And Cass claims to have trans alters living in, in that head of theirs. Roll it. How does DID affect your gender identity? For us, our gender identity and our DID are so significantly intertwined that they cannot be separated. To give an example of that, our last host, CJ, was a trans man and he medically transitioned. Like, this is what our last host made our body look like. And then around 2020, 2021, I split and became the new host, and then I detransitioned the body because I'm not a man. That being said, we don't regret having like top surgery because a lot of the elders in our system are men or masculine aligned, and so that makes them feel more comfortable. It's very confusing having so many genders in, in one brain, um, and it just was easiest for our body to become more gender neutral or gender fluid so that whoever's fronting can sort of dress up however they feel and present however they feel. But to sum it up, we all express our gender differently. Um, we have a range between cis men and trans men and non-binary people and women all in our head, and that's okay. I think you're all in the head. All right, guys, we're going to be wrapping it up on this one, and I can't remember if I played this clip in a video a while ago or if it was just a similar clip from this same person. So if this is a repeat here for you, I do apologize. However, I think it's important that we show clips like this because from what I'm hearing, some of the mandates might be coming back. They might try to uh, tell us to put our face diapers back on and people like this trans woman will surely enforce those rules. Anyway, guys, things are clearly getting crazy out there. So please take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Till next time. I love you guys. Peace. Roll it that people aren't masking right now in public is because of ableism. It's that simple. Yes, I will say again that ableism is a great and mighty tool of white supremacy. And if you don't understand that, please go look it up because I don't have time to explain it to you. Because of systemic oppression, BIPOC people are the most affected. Then you have BIPOC queer people and poor people. You have layers of marginalization that are deeply affected by the medical system. That means that not only are you more high at risk at getting sick, but then to actually be able to receive the care to make sure that you survive it is way lower. And every single time I say something about this, people post, well, then don't go out in public. Guess who's been isolated for years? Or, oh, well, then do a telehealth visit. Don't go to the doctor. I have to go to the doctor and I have to get scans and exams and tests done. And disabled and immunocompromised people are forced to go into these doctor's offices where nobody is masking, except for maybe one person. My practitioners, thank God, mask, but all their nurses don't. 
Well, I'm going to take this damn mask off. And you ain't black.